Um, let's look quickly at an example here, and then I'm going to get into sort of a, more of a live uh, example of, of how I do that. Um, we spoke a little bit about the skull piece here, what the eye was, what this nose was, these lines here. And I want you to, to now compare this illustration, which I did quickly a little earlier, and this one here, and start to look for examples of, of or, or correlations between the two. They don't look exactly the same, but as a first sketch, there are elements of this which are here. We've got this this tooth line, which I which I I liked from here. We have this tusk element, this back of the jaw of the elephant. But in terms of how I view this piece of material, uh, I, I get this. I get this sort of long line, this sort of bony protrusion at the top. I get a little bit of a of a bony knob here at the top. This this sort of crest type shape here. I have that crest type shape here. This indent, this drop down at the back, this very, um, what, what might be considered, I think from, from the back here, this is probably the, the cheekbone. I'm just taking a stab at that, I guess. But that's right here. Right, we have an eye cavity. I have an eye cavity, but I really like the break up, this line coming down from the nose, or coming up from the nose and across the eye, and I'm trying to get that line here as well. We have this indentation. I have a little bit of an indentation here, although not as deep and dark. Um, this was like a 10 minute sketch based on something that I saw here uh, and I didn't go through the steps of adjusting the exposure or adjusting the, um, the intensity of the light to expose those elements. That was more of a uh, a uh, sort of more visual way to show you what I'm seeing. Okay, let's take a look at the art of interpretation. Training ourselves to refine what we see. Let's get a little more into it. But how do we do that? How do we train ourselves to see more intently? Um, one of the ways we can do that uh, is by breaking down images graphically so we can begin to expose the simple shapes and forms, kind of the building blocks of a new idea from an image. And we've kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, we can also do uh, that by revealing images in chaos or textures and patterns by looking beyond the surface of what's depicted in an image uh, for elements that we can use as a kickoff point. And uh, one of the ways I like to do that is look at strange textures. And uh, I have up on the screen just a stippled ceiling or a textured ceiling uh, image. And um, we're going to start sketching over the top of this and pulling some information out of the image um, letting our minds play a little bit and start to um, start to create some new forms that um, exist past the surface. So we're going to go to our layer system, we'll create a new one, I'll just name this Sketches 1. And uh, let's just press F on the keypad just so we have, just so we can move this around a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little closer just to start. Uh, we'll choose paintbrush, have our opacity 100%, and just black is fine for this exercise. Now you can choose to do silhouettes here, or you can uh, do line work and do drawings. Um, either approach is fine. It really is about just bringing what you see to the surface and and playing a little bit. You know what? I'm going to turn this I'm going to turn this down a little bit so we can still see what's past it as we play. Now I see a very cool shape right here. Did anybody else see that? Something about that shape that I like. Everyone's like, well, I don't know what that is. I have no idea myself. But the shape is there, and that's the point. And start, once you have a shape, now you can come back and start going, okay, let's 
do a little bit of design work and develop what's there a little bit. Bring some symmetry to the form. And why were we attracted initially to the section in the center? Well, what's underneath that? Let's take a little, let's drop this down and we'll see what's underneath that. Well, we have the dark spot here. We've got some sort of shape here. And I think that I see something that I kind of like in there. So let's just go ahead and play a little bit, develop it a little bit further. Just leave it at that opacity for now. Create a new layer and let's merge these layers so that the opacity is fixed. And now we can draw on top of this a little darker. Let's drop this down. So there's something here that I f that's interesting sort of have an eye form created by that dot on one side. I'm just going to play here a little. And make some assumptions about what those are. Clear that right out again. I want to see what's back there. Something else. So that we can bring that out. Bring that out a little bit as well. So, I mean, when I do this, I don't always see in symmetry, but I take the inspiration that I find in the image and I start to play, uh, to play with it. For, a, and it's a wonderful way to start, uh, sort of discovering what is one, in your mind, where your mindset is at, but also just giving yourself an opportunity to stretch the muscle of to observe. Just work on our ability to dis, uh, to observe and to decision make. Because once you, once you find something in these images to, um, to work with, it's no good just sitting there. You've got to make a decision and go forward. So good or bad, it doesn't matter if these are all winners, um, but they have to start. And uh, that is the important thing, that you find an element within these images that will allow you to start. And that's roughly what I see, a little, a little weird creepy dude. All right, let's start over here and try another spot. Well, I see a mouth there, I see a low eye there, I see a sort of a cheek or a chin. Oh yeah, now you can start to see what that is. A little bit you've got and the, the 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 sort of dots on the page actually act as uh, an element which fills in the rest so 
So I don't know, can you guys see that? The two eyes, this sort of soft nose, sort of droopy mouth and chin. I mean, we can take it even further from there if we wanted to. But that's a good enough start to just get ideas moving. Interesting. It's a nice expression, a strange expression there too that I'm finding pretty, pretty interesting. Something to build off. If we turn this Actually, I'm going to do something else just so we can see a little bit more. Let's switch that to white. That layer, and let's fill fill this layer here uh, at 100%. There we go. So now you can start to see, in the absence of the reference behind it, a little clearer uh, what I'm seeing back there in the what I'm seeing back there in this texture. And now, you know, once, it, once it's exposed, you can begin to play, as I said, with some of the information that you're exposing. Again, this little boy expression, that little puffed out lower lip and wide-eyed look. It's kind of fun. It could become something pretty interesting. You know, and you can start to decide again what this guy is doing. All right, tough day at school, schoolboy. There we go. All right, let's close that and let's find another piece of. And you're probably seeing things that I'm not seeing. And that is what I love. Nobody will interpret images in the chaos the same as the next person. And that makes this experience very personal and also very specific to how you develop a style. But it will do the same thing for everyone, and that's train you to see a little better and work past what's presented to you to find something new. So I'm going to go one more time here. something there and there. And sometimes what happens is as soon as I throw a line on the page, what I thought I saw changes. And uh, it starts to pick up sort of information. It almost fills your mind, fills in the blanks a little bit for you. I mean, clearly today I'm in a humorous mood. There's some interesting stuff coming out. Perhaps 
It's the Halloween spirit. We'll see. I'm pretty sure I didn't wake up this morning looking to draw something like that. However, the point of the exercise really is to begin to see past the stuff that's here and find information in the chaos that you want to use or that you can use as inspiration to go forward. Now even these sort of Even these um, sort of unique characters um, can be modified to a more realistic approach after they've been uh, exposed out of this uh, image. So, you know, despite what they begin as, once we begin to apply some creative reasoning to our to our uh, images we can start to take it in a direction that we we want to This guy's there's a place for him as well. I see something more interesting here. What is that? There's something there, something worth looking at there. I'm not sure that the interior details match up, but the silhouette's interesting. Let's just fill that in and save it.
That's an interesting one. All right, let's clear that off. Actually, let's let's take a look at it with that background. So now you can kind of get a sense. This guy, I can't get over that. Uh, what is going on with the cutesiness today? But there's an interesting idea here that might develop into something later on. Clearly, I feel like that triangular shape is going to be important. And this guy's just got some attitude here. Funny head, cute little bug eyes. Hmm. There's something about the shape. They share a similar look, a similar profile start. But you can see how quickly that works, getting ourselves a good start and finding some images. So, I mean, it's important to take a minute, look through the chaos, and uh, find other elements going on in the world around us, in the textures, and the patterns, and the the people that move through your lives. This is, uh, you're going to be seeing aliens and creatures everywhere, and uh, that is the idea. They're out there, and it's just finding unique and interesting ways to help you to expose uh, expose them and bring them to the, f the foreground. And now you can take those things really anywhere you want to go. Could have one with a tongue out. Cool. All right, let's try another one real quick here. Let's turn that off. Start new layer. Oh, cancel. Let's call that uh, sketches one, and call this one sketches two. Let's turn that off and try one more time. You know, and this time, what you can do is go to Edit, Transform, and Rotate 180 degrees. Oh, that's the background. Select the background first, Edit. Won't allow you Transform because it's locked off, of course. So let's go to uh, Duplicate Layer, select OK, take this one here and just wrote throw that in the trash and then uh, with that selected edit transform rotate 180 and now that light shift is different let's see what we can pull out of this image in sketches too we'll do one in here let's go for a big one let's pull this back oh you see now I right off the bat see this threw that line down. I lost it. Let's try one more time. I was 
Let's build this one up a little slower. something there to start playing with. All right, let's turn that off, turn the white on, pardon me, turn the white on, and see what we have here. Definitely something interesting here. Let's turn that up a little. Now you can start to take it somewhere. Once you have it, you gotta persist in pulling it out. A 
that mess. Let's move it out and back to the middle of the page. Let's see what else we can can get from that. My uh, instinct is always to throw a real shoulder and a real a human shoulder in there, but we're not going to do that today. I won't let that happen. Not that it's not a good idea, but my first instincts I try to ignore uh, a little bit because they take me in familiar places and I want to get away from that in some respects, particularly when the outcome I'm looking for is sort of alien in nature. is often the case. Click the wrong button. All right. Well, we get the sense, we get the idea about the possibilities when we start to ignore the image that's put in front of us. And that includes this image. When we see this as we begin to interpret we don't have to stick to what we've developed if there is another form in this image that inspires us to move in another direction we should do so and save it on a layer and it doesn't mean you should be destructive to the work you've already created but you should allow yourself the freedom to explore that idea especially when you're concepting just so that you're not missing out on any opportunities for a new exploration. I had to shadow in the volumes here and see if there's anything that is appealing. I kind of like it. Well, there you 
we go. There is one of the techniques I'd like you to try um, in terms of finding uh, inspiration in images of texture and chaos. Give it a try and um, I'm sure you'll have some success in finding uh, some very unique characters. There you go. Let's move on to our next part.